Okay, welcome to the chi-squared test. Um, so, chi-squared test is a statistical test, so we're looking at uh, probability and significant differences. Um, and we use it where data is in categories, so we use it quite a lot in ecology where you might be saying, right, okay, uh, dandelions don't grow where it's wet, so you take samples uh, with a quadrat from where it's dry and where it's wet and you work out that you would expect if they're not affected by the degree of dampness that there would be equal numbers and you work out uh, how many you would expect in each area and then see if they're different. Um, in ecology, you're kind of generally really expecting that though there will be differences and in genetics, you're kind of expecting that there won't be differences uh, in your categories. So what categories, what categorical data have we got in inheritance? Well, obviously the categorical data that we've got is the phenotype, that's your category, and the numbers of each. where we're talking, of course, about the offspring. <coughs> so you would be looking at, you know, somebody telling you that a cross had been done and this is the numbers of each type of phenotype you've got. So you've then got sort of what you would, uh, what sort of inheritance you're dealing with and you will work out from the information given whether you're looking at monohybrid or dihybrid or codominance and generally you will then do the cross and get a ratio uh, mostly I have to say that just because you can't really derive a ratio for a linked cross, you would be looking at, for the dihybrid ones, unlinked genes. So we would be talking about random assortment and foiling uh, your gametes out. So, <coughs> we're going to do an example where... In our offspring, we have four different phenotypes. So this is fruit fly data. Normal wings, grey body. Normal wings, ebony body. Vestigial wings, grey body. Vestigial winged, ebony body. Now, irrespective of what numbers we get, I would then expect that, and you should know your ratios, to be either that I'm looking at a 93 to 3 to 1 ratio or a 1 to 1 to 1 to 1 ratio, depending on what information I've been given. The observed numbers are the results. So, uh, obviously this one is, we've got lots of normal grey and we've not got many vestigial ebony and we've got kind of equal numbers of normal ebony and vestigial grey. So, we're looking at a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio there. So, before we can actually start the chi-squared test, we need to write what is called a null hypothesis. Now, null in Latin means no, nothing. So, the null hypothesis is the hypothesis that you are testing in chi-squared. Now, if your null hypothesis is accepted, what you're saying is, yeah, I'm right about my model of inheritance. I was right to do the cross that I did. Uh, and everything, you know, and if you're looking at dihybrid, you'll be saying, yes, it's on, th those genes are on different chromosomes. If you're rejecting, at the end, your null hypothesis, what you're saying is, well, actually, there's something else going on here, there's something else going on with my genes, they might be uh, unlinked or it might be one gene's affecting another, there's something else going on. So your null hypothesis 
is always that there is no, and because it's a statistical test, we have to use this word significant, because we, there are differences in the data, they're not significant, they're not statistically significant. So there's no significant difference between the uh, the data gained and the ratio calculated, and you could put that the observed and expected uh, value. I don't mean calculated, I mean uh, derived, let's put derived. <coughs> so, the formula for chi-squared is, this is the Greek letter chi, uh, you'd, if you were writing it you'd write it C-H-I. Chi-squared equals the sum of so that means add everything up. The observed minus the expected, so this is your data that you've counted or got in given, your what you expected from the ratio from the cross that you've done, squared divided by the expected. So effectively you need to work out O minus E all squared over E for each phenotype and then add them up to get chi squared. Now that's uh, quite tricky to do unless you draw a little table. So sometimes uh, in questions you might get just the formula and you go it alone if you like so you might just get a space to do that in. Uh, sometimes you'll get a table, sometimes you'll get a bit of a table. So this is one uh, table from um, a past paper uh, where they've given you the full table so I could show you what the table titles are. So here we've got the phenotype, normal wings, grey body, normal wings, ebony body, vestigial wings, grey body, vestigial wings, ebony body. We've got how many we had got in it when we actually did the crops. So this is the data if you like. And we need to work out the expected number. Now for this one, what we were expecting was a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. So when the cross was done, it would have led you to a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. This would have been normal ebony, no, sorry, grey this would be normal ebony, this would be vestigial grey, and this one's vestigial ebony. So how do you work out the expected number? Well, the first thing you need to do is to add up all your observed numbers. So you need a total for that. So your total of your observed, oh, I really can't do that in my head, 30, 53... Uh, 123, 128, a good number. <coughs> and then you need to think, well, what does that ratio mean? So it means that we, what we would expect is if we've got 128 offspring down here, we would expect one out of every 16 to be vestigial and ebony. So effectively, you're going to multiply that number by 1 16th, 3 16ths, 3 16ths, and 9 16ths to get your expected number. You then need to, I'm not going to do this because I brought my calculator with me. I like you lot when you come to tests and homeworks and stuff. Oh, I've got my calculator with me. So, um, you then do the observed minus the expected. So this gives you the difference between what you would expect to happen and what has actually happened. And that's the thing that we're looking at, isn't it? Are, we, are they, those differences a significant difference, really different from what we expect, or are they just, uh, you know, we had a few less because it's down to chance? 
So some of these numbers will be minuses. So if this expected number is bigger, you're going to get a minus number here. So um, I'm really hoping no mathematicians ever watch these videos. The maths trick for making a minus number into a plus number is to square it. So, And then we can compare the differences. How different is that from this? Now obviously how different that is depends on how many we we're expecting to start off with. So, you know, if you've got three difference but you were and you were expecting a, um, a and it's out of a smaller number, then it's going to be a bigger proportion. So to eliminate that problem, it's a bit like doing that sort of percentage change thing. We're going to divide by the expected number. That will give us this O minus E squared over E and we then need to simply add the numbers in this column. So we just add those up. And that will give us our value of chi-squared. So our value of chi-squared will be whatever our total is down here. Now sometimes it has to be said you have not been given that full table. Sometimes in the past they've given you either no table or, or what I think is worse still is this and the formula. So if you've got that and the formula, you've got two choices. You can either add in your O minus E squared over E column so that you can add it up, or you can write out your O minus E squared, so your number over expected, put a bracket around it, plus sign, do it for the next one, do it for the next one, do it for the next one, write it out in a line, and then add them up. Uh, just a little practical tip for you when you're doing this. Um, instead of sort of, it's really tempting, I think, in, in when you're doing maths, to work down the columns. If you work across the row, you can just leave your numbers in the calculator. So you do the O minus E, then times it by itself, you know, write down your number, times it by itself, divide it by the expected, write your number down, go to the next row. And um, that kind of speeds things up. So we've dealt now with how to sort of fill in the table, and we would then have a number, whatever it is, at the bottom. And we need to look now at what that number means in order to make a conclusion. Are we going to accept that, or are we going to reject it? <coughs> so once you've got your value of chi-squared, you then need to... Uh, oh, I'll stick that over there. You then need to decide whether you're going to accept or reject your null hypothesis. And how we do that is we look at a probability table. Now, in other subjects, uh, I'm thinking psychology where you do chi-squared tests and maths, you might be looking at other levels and other ways of uh, looking at the data. However, in biology, you are only ever going to look down this column. We choose the 0 0.05 probability level because we're then we can be 95% certain that the conclusion we make about our null hypothesis and therefore the type of inheritance we're dealing with, we will be 95% certain that we're correct in our conclusions. So that's the probability level. It is just the conventional level for biology. As I say, you can see from the top there are other uh, probability levels, you know, you'd be 98% certain, 99% certain, 90% certain uh, that your conclusion was correct. We then have to deal with degrees of freedom, and the degrees of freedom are in practice and again you don't need to know the reasons for this, I'm guessing if you're at university you're doing some kind of biological stats, you probably will. Your degrees of freedom are the number of different phenotypes minus one. Now there is one cross that you might be given which is a uh, dihybrid where one of the characteristics is codominant that might give you six phenotypes but mostly we'd be looking at this one's got, you know, sort of a dihybrid cross would normally give you four phenotypes, 
Therefore, we're looking at three degrees of freedom and at that number following along. If you're looking at co-dominance, you've got three phenotypes, you know, red, white, pink. And we'd be looking at that number there as our value. And if we're looking at monohybrid, we'd be looking at that number, 3.84. So, this value here that I have just circled, I'll just do it in a different colour so that it stands out a bit more, is for this one. And our critical value is 7.82. Now what that represents is the very largest number that our chi-squared number can be and still be down to chance. That means if the chi-squared number you've calculated is bigger than 7.82, then actually this isn't a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. What you're saying is, well, there is a significant difference. So if it's bigger than, uh, if your critical chi-squared value is bigger than the critical value, you are going to reject, in all hypothesis, the difference is significant. at probability level of 0 0.05. If your chi-squared value is less than your critical value, that means the opposite. That means actually that is a 9 to 3 to 3. If we've got, you know, 0 0.67 down here, then we would have been saying, OK, it's less than the critical value. And we can now accept uh, any differences it's not significant at P. So what's caused the differences is purely chance and nothing else going on with the type of cross. So we then know that the type of cross you did was the right one and that the genes are unlinked. Now obviously if you've got linkage you're going to get far fewer numbers of these and more of these and then those will be in around about a 3 to 1 ratio and those will be around about equal and that should be quite easy to spot so if they said you know what might have caused this that will be linkage. Um, so chi-squared not as tricky as it looks even though you will you <laughs> will need a calculator. Okay, so uh, good luck with that.